Hey there, I'm Jenna with Databox and welcome to another episode of Data Snacks. Today we're going to talk about blog performance. Managing a blog, whether it's a business one or a personal one, requires commitment. And naturally, you want to see the results of that commitment come through with clear numbers from visits to conversions. This is why tracking the success of your blog over time is so important. You can see whether the changes you make in your strategy and approach have provided you with the desired result or if further adjustments are necessary. And the only way to really accomplish this is to be able to see how your blog has progressed over time. You can see now why it's so important to track and analyze the performance of your blog. And today we're gonna to be building a dashboard together that will help you discover blog KPIs you should already be tracking, how to use custom date ranges to compare your blog performance over time, and what you can do to improve some of the key metrics if you aren't hitting your goals. Let's get started. Okay, I'm inside the Databox app and the first thing I'll do is navigate to the Databox designer. I wanna use HubSpot Marketing and Google Analytics as my data sources, which you can find here by searching the metrics library. If you use a different marketing tool, don't worry, you'll still be able to follow along. Adding metrics from your selected data sources is super easy. So once I've chosen HubSpot from the metrics library here on the left, for example, all I have to do is drag and drop some of the available pre-built metrics. Here's a look at the dashboard we'll be creating today. You may notice that there are several ways of presenting the data in this dashboard. And with Databox, you can choose how you wanna visualize your metrics, which is extremely helpful when it comes to easily determining your blog performance. For example, the gauge here easily represents a comparison between two numbers, while the table works better for some other metrics. Both are represented in this dashboard because they serve different purposes, which we'll get into later. So let's start building this thing first. We'll start with the two Google Analytics metrics, bounce rate and pages per session. Now there's a lot to be said about the importance of bounce rate and some will even go as far as to say it's the most telling. This is not that far from the truth and that's because bounce rate could indicate your page content is irrelevant or confusing to your site visitors. To add this metric as a gauge, I head to the visualization types menu here and choose gauge. Then I click into the data block, choose Google Analytics as my data source, and from there I pick bounce rate. Bounce rate is defined by HubSpot as the percentage of people who land on a page on your website, then leave without clicking anything else or visiting a second page. A high bounce rate across your blog means that visitors are not interacting with the content or with your website. Now, according to SEMrush, a bounce rate of 56 to 70% is on the high side, although there could be a good reason for that, like slow page loading, 404 errors, poor mobile optimization. There's a few different reasons there. A 41% to 55% would be considered average, um, and your optimal bounce rate would be 26 to 40%. However, in order to see whether or not the changes you're making are actually influencing this number, tracking the bounce rate over time is a must. So with custom date ranges, that's exactly what you can do. Uh, you can choose to see your bounce rate over a specific period of time, such as before and then after you made changes to your blog or blog content. Then you can see if there's improvement and if your bounce rate is lower, which is the good one. <laughs> To enter a custom date range, click here on date range, then scroll down and enter whatever dates you'd like to see reflected in your data block. Similar to this, pages per session shows us the average number of pages viewed during a session during the specified date range. Now, keep in mind that repeated views of a single page are counted. So if someone's interested in more than one piece of content on your blog after they visit, this metric will show that they did just that. 
To add this to our dashboard, I'm actually just going to duplicate my bounce rate data block. Makes it easy. Um, and then I change the metric to pages per session. A high pages per session rate is an indication that your blog visitors find your content to be valuable and engaging. And again, with CDR or custom date ranges, you can easily compare these metrics across months and quarters to see if the improvements you made had an effect. Now we're moving on to HubSpot marketing metrics, starting with a table that contains new blog posts published, blog post views, and new blog subscribers. To create this table, once again, I go to visualization types and this time choose table. I'm going to click in to edit this data block and select data from multiple metrics. In the first row, I'll select HubSpot marketing here and choose new posts published. I'll add a second row and select blog post views. And finally, I'll add a third row and select new blog post subscribers. By comparing these three metrics over different time periods with our custom date ranges, you can get your answers and see if the increase in publishing is providing you with the results you want. Next, let's look at top blog posts by click-through rate and page views. These metrics show us the ratio of users who click on a specific link to the number of total users who view a page. To add each of these to our dashboard separately, I'll search our metric library and simply drag each data block in. There we go. Now having a high number of blog views with a low CTR or click-through rate means that people who see your posts don't really interact with them. As we mentioned before, this could be due to the same issues giving you a high bounce rate um, or just not engaging CTAs. Luckily, with the data on this dashboard, you can easily see the current state and as you build your blog, compare it to previous periods, see whether the changes you make bring you closer to your desired result. Finally, we come to leads by source. This tells you which source brings the most views to your blog. Of course, we all wanna see high numbers with direct traffic and organic search because that's the free stuff, but sometimes additional promotion is necessary. By comparing this metric over time periods of weeks, months, or quarters, you can see whether certain blog boosting campaigns have changed the source of your leads and if more adjustments are needed. Okay, we have our dashboard. But more importantly, we now have the opportunity to compare your blog's performance over time. Each time you make a change, do a new design, make more powerful CTAs, or increase your publishing rate, you will be able to see if that makes a difference by comparing your current blog post performance to previous periods. That's it for today. Being able to compare your current blog performance to previous periods enables you to get insights into trends for certain KPIs like bounce rate, blog views, and click-through rate. These insights will help you make changes to improve the declining numbers or keep the current strategy if the metrics are exactly where you want them in comparison to the goals that you set. If you need help comparing your current blog performance to previous periods, then our support team can definitely build the dashboards you need for free. So head on over to databox.com slash free dashboard setup to get started or just click the link above. And I'll see you next time.